And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Rec Raiders. Now this is from Kids Table Board Games, and they've made a lot of games in the past that are mostly geared towards kids, families with kids type situations, but this game here, Rec Raiders, is a step above that. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, families can still play this game, but this is, I would say, probably the most gamery game that they have made thus far. It is a game in which you have a group of undersea divers, and they're going around and collecting treasure which have been sunken on the floor and while you're at it build an aquarium put some fish in the aquarium uh, collect seashells also it's a game in which you're trying to score a lot of points through various ways here is how it plays In this game, players are trying to score points in various ways. One of the ways to score points is through exhibits here. And these exhibits are going to get you points at the end of the game. And when a player has done a certain, completed a certain amount of exhibits, that's going to actually trigger the end of the game. So, for example, a two-player game, if someone does six exhibits, that will trigger the end. Players are going to get points from exhibits, from their own personal collection, and from completing aquariums. And they're doing that by diving for treasure. Now, what players are going to do is, at the beginning of the game these dice are rolled and you're going to look you'll notice that some of the dice are touching this this is the lid of the box by the way they're touching this shell here this conch shell so they're going to be put here on this board over here in that spot this one's slightly touching the scalp shell so i'll put that here the rest aren't touching any shell so i just put those here and on a player's turn, they're going to pick one of those dice and use it. If all the dice are gone, then they're all thrown back in the box again and this process continues. Now when you take a die, so I take this die here for example, I took it from the spot where there's a shell, so I get one of those shells. Hooray! And shells can be used for various things, including uh, the conch shells can be, you can discard these to add or subtract one from a die. The scallops will let you discard one to take an extra treasure, and starfish lets you, basically they can count as wild treasures here on these spots. Now when you take the die, you're going to use the number on the die, so this was a five, you're going to use that die to put out one of your divers on the board, or to move a diver you already have on the board. You can put them on one of the wrecks in the number five spot, or I can put them over here on the beach in the five spot. Putting them on the beach will give you the shells that are there. So you can see the different spots give you the various shells. If you put them in at a wreck, you're going to get a treasure of that type. The treasures are all tiles like this, although in the back they, there's three different pictures for each of the different shells. I mean, each of the treasures. If you go to a wreck where there already are divers, so let's say there was a yellow diver here and a purple diver here, I'd place this. I would get two purple treasures. I'd get one from me, and then before being next to me, I'd get another one, and this yellow player would also get one. Now, you can't move a person from one spot to another spot in the same thing, but you can replace someone else's diver. So maybe this blue player decides to go here to using a four. That bounces mine to the four on the beach. And had there been somebody there, I would have bounced them off. But by bouncing there, I get the shells. So having someone kick you out of a wreck is not a bad thing. When you get these treasures, you're going to decide what to do with them. You'll look on this side, you can add them to your collection. Adding treasures in your collections is worth a couple things. At the end of the game, you'll look at the pictures on the back of these, and every different picture that's in your whole collection, and you could have all of them be different, is worth a point. But also, if every treasure in a row is the same, you will get that many points. Now, you have to build them on top of each other like this. So I can put one here, here, or here, if I get another treasure. And so that's two different ways to score points from here. Or you can leave them on this side and just put them on display over here, trying to get one of these exhibits. When you have enough treasures in an exhibit at the end of your turn, you can take a matching exhibit, so I could take this one here, and this will give me six points at the end of the game. I can also spend shells. I can spend a conch shell to get an extra two points, which this would be eight. And I can spell the, spend this shell here to essentially get kind of a, a, a wild treasure. Uh, just a, a random treasure uh, out there picking from any pile I want. Now some treasures, this one doesn't matter because they're all yellow. Here they're mixed up. You don't have to put them in this order. I could have done blue, blue, brown, brown, purple. But if you do them in the exact order, there's a bonus down here of shells. 
Now, I already mentioned that shells can be used to manipulate dice and to get extra points when claiming an exhibit, but you can also, in your turn, take an aquarium. You, can take, you have to take the bottom part first, and you'll see there's a row of bottoms, middles, and tops. And the cost for it is there, and at the end of the game, it's worth this many points. The middles are the same way, so you can see this one here is worth four points. This one's worth three. I could add a couple more middles to this one, putting this guy on top. And this is a pretty valuable aquarium. It's worth 13 points. Then putting a top on this particular aquarium, this says every star is worth two points in this particular aquarium. That was not the best top to put on this one, considering there's only one star in it. So let's see here. I would probably pick this one here. That shows the conch shells, and so I would get, so there's four of them, that's another eight points for putting that top. Aquariums don't have to be finished to score points, and you can have multiple aquariums started. You just need to start with the bottom, have as many middles as you want, and once you put the top on, it's capped off. That's pretty much it. You're going to be scoring points through those different ways. At the end of the game, you can keep track of the points by using the box, and just use a crab to track each person's points, and whoever has the most is the winner. The components for this game are fantastic. I like how the little divers here, you know, they have the little things put on them. They look like divers. That's really cool. The treasures are very easy to distinguish to four different types of treasures and what's on the other side of them. These cards look fantastic. They're good quality. The aquariums are really fun because each of the aquariums shows various fish. And things, you know, different things that you have in order. I mean, if you have these in an aquarium, it's a pretty impressive aquarium. That's just neat. And it, it, it looks good as you put them together. The board, the little crabs that you use for scoring. I like how this all looks. It's a very good quality product. These are nice. My only complaint is the dice. The dice are really cool dice, right? The problem is, is that because they use different fish on each side, the six and the one are pretty easy to tell apart, but we, we had some people who kept getting the fours and fives mixed up. You said that's pretty obvious, I guess. I think pips might have been just a little bit easier. That's a very, very minor complaint. It's the only thing I have. Rolling the dice in a box is an interesting thing because you got to kind of hit them off the side of the box and, you know, it, where they land. Using the box of scoring at first, I thought that was a bad idea because you can't see it from the outside. But since you're only doing it at the end of the game, it doesn't really matter. You just have one person keep track of the scores. So, like I said, really, really, really great production. Wow, do I like this game. Now, this is what the epitome of what I would call a point salad game, in which you're going to do various things to score points. Uh, there's three main ways, completing the, collect, uh, completing the different projects there, uh, filling up your own collection, and building an aquarium. Each one of these, I mean, you can dabble in all of them, do a little bit of each, or you can really focus on one, like I'm just gonna collect as many seashells as I can and build up these aquariums. Now, I haven't played a game yet where I've gone all in on something. Although I've come pretty close to completing my collection. And I've done ones where I barely, I barely done anything with the exhibits. Although you can also, there's circular things doing exhibits correctly. can get you bonus shells, which will allow you to get aquariums. The theme is fantastic. The whole underwater sea theme is just very joyous for me. I like how it looks. The production values of this game don't hurt at all. The whole thing is just a pleasure to be out there. But let's admit it, like I said, a points out. You do things to get points, but this feels like the master of points out games, Stefan Feld, made a game for families. Like this is an easier game to play than his more ob obtuse ones. He didn't design this one, it just feels like that's in his, in his category. But this one is one I could easily get anyone to play. I don't have to sit there and explain for the longest time how you get points. It's pretty simple. Build aquariums, finish exhibits, complete your collection. Now there's a little bit more to it than that, but the dice drafting is fun. It's always great when the, the way the number of dice that are being thrown into the box is varied in, in a way so that if you are playing uh, a game with multiple players, the, you are always at some point going to get first choice of those dice. And that's always great when that comes. Sometimes you're like, well, a two. I guess I'll use a two, but you always get something. You're always going to get at least a treasure or some shells. There's no way around that, and I like that. It's not, the game, I mean, you can get some great choices. You have two people on treasures. You drop a guy in between them. You just got three treasures. You put someone on a treasure that has a lot of numbers that are already out there and dice, hoping someone knocks you off so that you get the free shells and it wasn't even your turn. Or you can manipulate the shells to get what you want, but then you sit there and wonder, is that worth using them for when you could be using them to build this cool aquarium? So it's good. 
Um, I was really happy with this. As the years go by, these type of games where you get rewarded for every action really have tended to appeal to me. And ones that give you the, a variety of things to do. There's little expansions for this too, which I haven't even gone into, clams and things like that. Um, but just the base game, which is what I'm judging on here, is really well done. This is kids, tables, board games. This is their best game that they've done, and they've done some pretty neat ones. Uh, I really like this one. Looking forward to getting it to the table again. It's not going to be one I think that people are going to write long strategy books about, but you're certainly going to be one that I'm talking about that I really enjoy playing, and that's why I play games. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent.